What is up guys, Rick Kakis here, and for the past few days, I have been absolutely living and breathing the Wrath of the Machine raid. I've beaten it several times just for the sake of beating it, and in order to make, of course, the complete Wrath of the Machine guide for dummies video, and then gone back and just explored, spent hours looking for the fabled fourth monitor to unlock that secret chest. I've spent so much time recently in the Wrath of the Machine is the only thing on my brain, so I thought, let's talk about it. Let's review, let's do a raid review on the Wrath of the Machine because it is just another piece of content that came with the Rise of Iron expansion and it should be assessed as thus. We should talk about what we liked and what we didn't like in a respectful and constructive manner of course about the Wrath of the Machine. Firstly, I owe it to you guys in order to share my opinions and what I feel about this piece of content but also hopefully if we have similar opinions we can share them with Bungie and Bungie will become aware of what they need to do to improve prove the next time around when Destiny 2's raids finally hit. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about the Wrath of the Machine raid. And the first thing I want to talk about is what I enjoyed about the Wrath of the Machine. Firstly, it's got to be the atmosphere. Just the atmosphere of this raid I felt was absolutely fantastic. Everything was very well designed, it was very dark, very spooky, you know, that red lighting in so many places was so cool. That especially going down those stairs and looking at that massive vista of the glowing red massive war mine complex it was just so bloody cool. And again that atmosphere really struck me and it's kept striking me as I've gone back and back and back it's just a very cool place to be so I've got to give props firstly for that also I really enjoyed the mix-up of the encounters I felt that it was a very different experience in each encounter whereas you know King's Fall didn't really have this I felt that the Vault of Glass did this well where one minute you're battling a boss the next minute you're just looking uh, for those stupid oracles and then you're slowing down being really stealthy in the Gorgon's Maze that's kind of the opposite not exactly the opposite but very different from King's Fall while I don't think King's Fall was a bad piece of content at all of course each raid has its high points and its low points and I felt that with King's Fall, basically every encounter was doing a bunch of different mechanics in order to fight a boss, and then shooting that boss a million times in the head with sniper rifle ammo. And that, again, that was a lot of encounters. That was the War Priest, that was Golgroth, that was the Daughters, that was Oryx. And so it was nice to see going into the Wrath of the Machine. Yes, you had a couple of boss fights, and of course you're going to. But that whole outside engagement with the siege engine, that was something very different, that is entirely different than the normal boss fights we're used to seeing. So I definitely enjoyed that. I felt that was really cool. And also, the lead up to the final boss fight where you're just getting used to the mechanics and you're chucking the bombs at uh, the actual places you have to hit, at those little nodes, the di glowing red diamonds, that's really cool. Again, you're not damaging a boss in that encounter, you're just throwing the orbs at the nodes. Like you're doing something completely different, you're doing a different activity, and then of course the next engagement you are actually fighting that boss. But again, I'm really glad that Bungie switched up the engagements. Each engagement, each activity, feels very different than the last, I think. And that is one of the best parts about this raid, is that it's different as you go through it. You're not just doing the same thing over and over and over again, and that is very good. Now moving on, the next thing that I really loved is the loot. The raid loot, I think, this time around is excellently designed. Firstly, actually, in how it looks. Funny enough, a lot of people were big, including me, I kind of even said this, that the loot looks kind of lame. And in fairness, it totally does until you upgrade it. Once you upgrade the raid loot fully, it looks totally different. You have these moving parts, uh, it glows red with SIVA, it's just so much cooler. That was definitely a nice little easter egg to find, to get these relatively lame looking raid weapons, and then once you fully upgrade them, you get to see how kind of they really look once they're infused 
with Siva and you get that final perk. And let's also talk about that perk because I think these raid weapons are so well designed in their perk layouts because they all have unique perks that relate to the other normal perks, like the fusion rifle that has army of one, which we're all used to, you know, increasing your grenade and melee cooldown with unassisted kills. Then it has the two for one perk, which we've never seen before until it shows up on these raid weapons and it just doubles army of one's effect. That is absolutely fantastic. I have kind of been going on for a long time that you need to make these raid weapons unique and giving them perks that basically no other gun can get is an absolutely fantastic way of doing it. And I feel like all of them have very cool perks. Now, of course, as time goes on, some may be way more useful than others. You might have raid weapons that just end up being not very good at all, and that's just gonna happen. But I'm glad that they're unique. Right, you had before raid weapons that they were elemental, which of course was a unique factor. Once those were taken away, you had the cocoon perk, but that cocoon perk was on all of those raid weapons, so some of them it was much more useful than others. This time around, having a useful, uniquely designed perk on all of the raid weapons is fantastic. And that's really the three key factors, and frankly a lot of little factors, and why I overall enjoyed the Wrath of the Machine. I would definitely have to say that I'm much more positive than negative towards the Wrath of the Machine. I like this raid, I found it definitely enjoyable. But there are definitely a little bit of negatives. Firstly, the main criticism that I want to tackle because it's the main thing I hear from other people is that this raid was too short. Definitely in order, just looking at the completion times for the world's first, it is shorter than the other raids. And I feel like this may have a little bit of legitimacy, especially after the siege engine encounter, once you're going down to the final boss encounter, you explore through a lot of the raid, and I think that's fantastic, but I feel like they definitely could have added some other little encounter, if not a boss fight, just something else to kind of spend a little bit of time in one of these areas more so than it is now, because frankly now, you just kind of can run through that area and you can get through it very quickly. I just felt that they should have filled that in with something else. Now with that being said, I definitely also have to say that I don't think that this raid is ridiculously short or anything. I think that you spend a decent amount of time in this piece of content, especially if you're going through for the first time and you're wiping a lot. So I don't think that the length of this raid is a huge issue, although I do feel like it could have been improved in that one aspect that I already mentioned. However, moving on, my next complaint I think is a lot more legitimate and I really do feel like Bungie should have done this better. And it's in this video because it very heavily relates to the raid, although it isn't technically and necessarily a raid issue. It's simply that I feel like this raid came out too fast. I feel like Bungie should have waited a week after the Rise of Iron's release before releasing the Wrath of the Machine raid. Three days is really soon and they didn't do this with their other expansions. And I feel like it caught a lot of players off guard. So many players are still in the 360s of light and it really doesn't help that Bungie actually went in and purposely limited the leveling system. Engrams were decrypting only one light above of what you are and then furthermore they could only go up to 365 at the absolute maximum. They just limited the amount of activities that you can do to level up. That's why everyone went to farm Omnigal. And it was a very good and intelligently written post on Reddit that was basically saying, look Bungie, we're gonna do whatever it takes to do what we need to do. And I know the main you know, criticism to what I'm saying is there's gonna be people saying, well, you don't have to do this. You can enjoy the content all you want. Nothing says that you have to play the raid as soon as it comes out. That is absolutely a legitimate thing to say. But using the same logic of that argument, there's nothing preventing players or there's nothing wrong with players wanting to be playing the raid as soon as it comes out and trying to beat it, you know, worlds first and all of that stuff. You know, players will do what they want to do. And you're totally within your right as a Destiny player to be, want to be leveled up and playing the raid on the first day. You are totally within your rights to do that. You can do that if you want to. And you're also totally able to say screw the raid and just enjoy the content and take it easy. Both sides are completely legitimate. But the way that Bungie screwed over this leveling system and really dialed it back 
is just really limiting the fun of that one group of players. And again, this Reddit post that I mentioned earlier was really just saying this, saying that we're gonna find ways. We found out how to grind Omnigal. We were gonna find ways to level up. All that did was limit the amount of fun that we could have when we did it. So all the players grinding Omnigal, they can do that if they want to, they're not gonna have that much fun. And really all Bungie did by limiting the leveling system is make a lot of their players have less fun. So congratulations on that, that was not a good idea I think, especially coming out of the April update. I made an entire video specifically praising Bungie on how good I thought the leveling system was. I loved the constant progression model. I loved that so many different activities could give you max light gear. But now it's packages and grinding strikes and the raid. And if you want anything else, fuck off. Cause there's really nothing else. And that I think dialing back the leveling system, making it a lot harder to level up and then making the raid come out so soon. I didn't like that combination of things. I thought that Bungie should have given players a, a bit more time to enjoy the Rise of Iron. And I hope they don't make this mistake again. And moving on, the last piece of criticism I would have about the Wrath of the Machine is again a pretty limited one. I don't feel like this is a huge issue, but it's something that I feel like I should bring up. And it's simply that I wish more lore happened in the Wrath of the Machine. You know, I, I wish your ghost said some things or, you know, you had those scannable objects like you had in the Taken King where you could go up and scan a husk or whatever and it would give you a little bit of information like your ghost would talk and give you some information about what this means, what this is. I wish more of those things were in the Wrath of the Machine. You could scan one of the SIVA servers if you wanted to so, you know, it, was, it wasn't a cutscene making you do it every time. Like if you wanted to, you could go up and scan a SIVA server and your ghost would say, Hey, it looks like this is where they developed SIVA, I heard blah blah blah, and tell a little bit more about the lore. I feel like that's kind of a missed opportunity, more than a complaint, just a missed opportunity that Bungie could have included to have a little bit more interesting lore within the Wrath of the Machine. But that's really it, and as I said, my only real complaint is that Bungie made this come out too soon and dialed back the leveling system too much limiting the fun of a lot of players and just making what should have been an enjoyment of new content a relentless grind for many players. Like, Destiny players are gonna grind regardless. Help us have fun in that grind, Bungie. Like, you know we're gonna do it anyways. Why not just throw us a bone and help us have fun along that grind? But in any event, that's really my only main concern and that's more uh, of a thing involving the Wrath of the Machine than specifically pinpoint a concern about the Wrath of the Machine. As I said earlier, the atmosphere is absolutely fantastic, the differentiation within the engagements is amazing, and the loot is so cool. And overall, this piece of content, the Wrath of the Machine, is just fantastic. Very glad that Bungie made the Rise of Iron. I think a lot of people may not know this, they weren't gonna make this expansion. They were gonna come out with Destiny 2. Once they realized that they would have to delay Destiny 2 back to 2017, they decided that we can't leave Destiny this barren for this long, and they made kind of last minute the Rise of Iron. And I think they did a pretty fucking good job for kind of a last minute expansion, if you don't mind me saying. Like, good job, Bungie. The Wrath of the Machine is going to give us hundreds of hours of playtime, I'm sure. And I've been playing this, as I've said, hours and hours and double digits of hours easily. Like, probably 24, 30 hours at this point, my for goodness sakes. And we still haven't figured out where that stupid fourth monitor is. We still have not unlocked all of the raid secrets, and that's pretty cool. I hope it's not just hidden around hard mode. I hope not. I hope there's just something we haven't cracked yet, but uh, there's still some secrets the Wrath of the Machine has yet to impart on us. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Found it interesting? If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video, even if it's just telling a friend. Now, if you guys want to see more Destiny content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. Now, if you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below, as is my Twitch channel, which you can also follow. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.